and, and build them up. In like Argentina somewhere. Maybe you're glad that you go to Argentina. That's a a glider little country in the middle of South America. Um, let me think. We'll, we'll That's see. because uh, Germans went there after 1945. Yeah, exactly. The white they whitened it up, man. Um, <sighs> let's see what city. What city do we want to do, man? Um, um let's do. We did Pittsburgh last night. Let's do. What about San Diego, Rock? San Diego. San Diego. I think San Diego actually has, actually is more red. So. I mean, it's it's, it's, it's not going to be a lot going on out there, man. We've already seen the demographics. We know the demographics. Everything's gonna be run perfectly. They're not gonna have any any structural problems. Okay, um, here we go. Lawmakers introduced a bill today to increase the minimum wage for people who work in healthcare facilities. The proposal calls for raising their minimum wage to $25 an hour. This isn't the first attempt, and as our political reporter Morgan Reiner tells us, it covers everyone from janitors to security guards. The California Hospital Association told me that if this measure passes, it'll only hurt the hospital system, which is already in financial. Goddamn Morticia Adams. Exactly Adam. why. Why do janitors need to be paid $25 an hour? Yes, okay, your your medical professionals do, but why do janitors and, and peripherals need that? Yeah. Um, distress. Those in favor of the bill say it will only help. Raymond Meyer is a cook at a residential care facility. Nutrition is definitely still part of patient care. Beyond nutrition, he said food comforts the patients. One patient was feeling down, and the family told Raymond his potato leek soup would lift her spirits. I made a special batch just for her. I came in the next day, and her family came up and gave me a big hug. And said she passed. They said that was the last smile they saw. You killed her, Raymond. Your fucking soup killed her. <laughs> you put too much leak in that thing. Right. The <laughs> fuck, you bastard. He's up here fucking telling the story that makes himself the hero. Look at this fucking guy. And the family told Raymond his potato leak soup would lift her spirits. I made a special batch just for her. I came in the next day and her family came up and gave me a big hug and said she passed. They said that was the last smile they saw on her face. It's stories like that that keep him at the care facility, even though it means he can't care for himself. I work my eight hours and then I go drive a lift for six hours. It's hard to get the proper rest, get the proper care I need for myself. It's why Senator Maria Elena Durazo is introducing a $25 minimum wage for all health care workers. We know that California is facing a patient care crisis because we don't have enough health care workers like you looking out for Californians. She said people of They're color facing and a women cost make of up living the majority crisis of the because of the because of your policies that take so much money from them by taxes workers by like Real estate prices. Because we don't have enough health care workers like you looking out for Californians. She said people of color and women make up the majority of the low wage health care workforce. It's not acceptable to build a health care system on the backs of underpaid. But this bill faces strong opposition from the health care industry. The California Hospital Association said this crisis is not theoretical. In a statement, they said California's health care system is on the edge of a cliff. One hospital in the Central Valley has already closed this year. Several others on the verge of shutting their doors. And dozens have had to reduce services just to keep doors open. 
Any proposal that would further threaten hospitals' ability to care for patients will only mean more uncertainty and diminished care for patients in every... Yeah, there's no, there's no way you can pay these people $25. What happened to man? all that COVID money? It's gone, man. That's when crazy. are people of color going to get tired of being used all the time to put up no. a political agenda? Never. Never. Um... Okay. What do we have here? Send me. Welcome back, everyone. Thanks for sticking with us here on the CW. A San Diego art gallery is honoring Black History Month by showcasing local talent and Black culture. This Sunday, the Oya Art Gallery and Boutique is featuring Afrofuturist haiku author Winston Shaw. Winston joining us this morning to talk about his work and about the event. That's a lot to take in, haiku Afrofuturism. Uh, can you start off by telling us what Afrofuturism is and about how, how you came to be involved in it? Yeah, sure. Well, um, first of all, thank you so yeah, much thanks for, for joining having us. Me. I appreciate it. Um, Afrofuturism is really just about taking the narrative and uh, in terms of who we as black people depict ourselves as and how we think about ourselves, just being at the vanguard of that, whether that's technology, whether that's, you know, in terms of movies like Black Panther, where concepts like vibranium, um, yeah. using that as sort of an, an you know, an idea and just being original and uh, about how we depict ourselves in the future. It's like what this inner. I'm confused. Wait, man. hold up. Oh I'm gosh, offended. I was laughing my head off there, but I was muted. I'm offended. I know the hell Afrofuturism is not chimpanzees drinking Starbucks. What the f <laughs> Yeah, this is this is just bizarre. I mean, these are these people are fucking bizarre about man. ourselves. Just being at the vanguard of that, whether that's technology, whether that's you know, in terms of movies like Black Panther, where concepts like vibranium, yeah. um, using that as sort of an, an you know an idea, <laughs> and just being original and uh, about how we depict ourselves in the future. It's like what this intersection of uh, black culture and sci-fi almost, right? Right. That's exactly what it is. Um, and so usually when people talk about Afrofuturism, they they're mentioning, you know, comic books and sci-fi because technology and new places like space allows us the perfect opportunity um, for new ideas and to, you know, sort of uh, depict ourselves in, in an original way, in an original space. And you put a piece together. You said it's on audiobook. We have that QR code that people are able to download, and there's also more on our website. But tell us about this what is, you put together involving hike. Like, I mean, like... Because the reality is a bucket of sad, and you don't have any solutions. So you look to the future. I'm going to bed. Some bright Good future night. that you couldn't believe. <laughs> This is this is this is strange, man. These people are fucking bizarre. Everything was a monkey. Every fucking picture he had was of a monkey. Did you notice that? All That's the how he see himself. What the hell? I'm like, uh uh. <laughs> but if a white person says monkey, he fucking his heart fucking palpitates and shit. He fucking like I I, I don't know what the fuck. Wrong with these people, man. Um, wow. You think he's trolling back? <laughs> I no, hell no. I don't think that, that he has enough like since I don't think he's that witty to troll. I think he's dead serious. I think he just lack of self awareness. I think he is a I think it's a lack of self awareness. So I think it is, man. Um February Black History Month, we are celebrating by highlighting some of San Diego's Black-owned businesses. And today we're featuring Bridget's Essence of Beauty. They're in Kearney Mesa, the owner specializing in this right here, wig, wig making. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, Black beauty is fucking 
Indian and Brazilian hair. And everywhere you go, it's wigs, it's nails, <laughs> it's haircuts, barbers. Like, can we get originality? This is this shit is in fucking insane, man. I mean, what the fuck is going on? What planet are these people from? We're from a different planet, man. We don't. We're not from Earth. Black beauty. There's nothing. You think you are gonna see Afro wigs in here or some shit? It's all fucking. Goddamn on Brito hair and fucking Patel hair. And today we're featuring Bridget's Essence of Beauty. They're in Kearney Mesa. The owner specializing in this right here, wig, wig making, and makes some for TV shows like How to Get Away with Murder, okay. The Salon, and The Spa also offer other services. Permanent makeup, stretch mark revision, scar revision, scalp micropigmentation, where that gives you the illusion that you have hair, but you don't have hair. She can do a lot Love for that. you. Yeah, you can find yeah. Bridget's Essence of Beauty. They're over on Murphy Canyon Road. These people are fucking so I was uh, in a great uh, chat there. Yeah, that would work if we locked up all the uh, most violent ones and, and, and had high punishments available for them so that, you know, they don't step out of line, you know, right? Then diversity would be a strength, but uh, not right now, not when you're letting go stuff go. Diversity is never going to be a strength, man. Because you're still going to have the, the ones who aren't criminals calling you racist and bitching about every little thing you say. So what about that, John? Well, you you basically say, no, we're not going to prof- – we're not going to – Good luck with we're that. Gonna ignore that. Good luck with that. Good well, in the that. new society, that's you, you <laughs> don't have uh, the, the built-up media that just loves and eats that up. Mm. Mm. Be like one of those African countries. I don't care what you think. This is what our culture is, right? We're continuing to follow breaking news here at CBS 8. One person is dead and two more are hurt after a shooting in Fallbrook. I'm Jesse Pagan in for Carlo Chiquetto. I'm Marcella Lee. This is happening in the 3100 block of Retchie Road. A neighbor tells us it happened at Atkins Nursery. CBS 8's Rocio de la Fe is live nearby tonight where we are learning that a 76-year-old man has been arrested. Rocio? That's right. The sheriff confirms that a 76-year-old man was the shooter uh, behind the gunfire. He's described as a 76-year-old man again, a Hispanic man, that is. He was hitting take it into custody at around 315 this afternoon. Now, the sheriff's department has not confirmed the location of where that shooting unfolded, but did say that it took place at a nursery nearby. Now, that call came in at around 245 in response to an assault with a deadly weapon. Deputies say they found one person dead at the scene. Two other victims were taken to the hospital. Their condition is not known at this time. Before three o'clock. So you still think diversity is just true? <laughs> This place wouldn't have any fucking crime if it wasn't for Umbritos and Sons, man. Genetic Freak says if Gladys start anew, they will end up in the same position in a hundred years because they love sports and entertainment too much to keep us out. <laughs> Need Umbritos to build and Tigers to do the tech. <laughs> Yeah, man, those tigers were begging those gliders to leave them alone. They were like, "We just want to be by ourselves. Leave us alone." Those those gliders went over there and made those tigers come out into the world. If you study Japanese and Chinese history, they those people wanted to be isolated. They didn't want any contact with other groups. Gliders forced them, man. That shit is and crazy. Britain. Britain went to war to enforce their right to uh, sell opiates to Chinese at one. Yeah, 
it's like y'all, 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 y'all just gonna fuck it up. Yeah, it's, y'all just gonna fuck it up in the years, man. Y'all just, y'all gonna fuck it up. Give me another city, man. Give me another city, man. Y'all, y'all ain't gonna do. Yeah, y'all gonna fuck it up. There's no, there's no, um, there's no hope for y'all. Y'all are, y'all are hope. You're right. San Diego is pretty boring, but I yeah. thought it might be a nice change. Y'all, y'all, uh, you notice yeah. how they didn't specify that it was a tree nursery, plant nursery, and instead mm-hmm. of a, a human nursery, trying to yeah. play it up. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they, they, it's just a, just a plant nursery They're trying to make it seem like, yeah, bigger story. Um, I see a mobile. Mobile. Oh, my God. Mobile, man. Mobile is a, whew, whew. Lord have mercy. This is, this is, this is, this is show you how it's done, man. Um, they'll show you how it's done here in Mobile, man. Violence continuing across Mobile. A mother, Sun Coast. Her son, is doing what she can to help others in the same situation. Fox News, Dacia Smith, with that story for us. And Dacia, she told you this has been a long time coming. That's right. Nigel Hill lost her son, Javan Scruggs, about a year and a half ago. So she knows firsthand how hard this is. And that's why she's reaching out to other mothers to help them heal from the loss of a loved one to violence. Back in September of 2021, Nigel Hill's son, Chavan Scruggs, was killed outside of Figures Park. But even while grieving the loss of her son, she knew she wanted to help others. It was a bad. Look like a good kid, right? <laughs> right? Honor roll student, man. Great kid. Yeah, super kid with the uh, blood uh, dripping down from the letters. He, he, he's going to go places. So he's going to be a doctor. Figures Park. But even while grieving the loss of her son, she knew she wanted to help others. It was a bad situation and a bad place for me. And I know that the way I felt, you're going to need a team. You're going to need people to come together. That's why she started the group Mothers Involved Against Gun Violence to help those going through the same pain that she did. Being able to be with someone that heart hurts the same way your heart hurts, That makes all the change in the world. She started the group in November. It now has 60 members, and they had their first in-person meeting a few weeks ago. Hill says it's already making a difference. We share a... Look at this group. It's all fucking sisters. (laughs) You got one glider here. Her son probably got killed in a home invasion or carjacking or some shit. You got another on Brita here or glider maybe. And then the rest is just fucking sisters. (laughs) <laughs> well, Aki, you are the majority there officially, 50.6%. Okay. We share experiences about going to trial, uh, experiences about, I mean, you may not be able to sleep at night. You may feel like you may not want to go on. It's somebody in that group that's going to reach out to you. And not only has it helped them, but Hill says seeing her vision become a reality has helped her through her process. It gives me hope. It gives me motivation to keep fighting for that next young. Now I will say this, this sister's coping. She's trying to do something and she she's, she's creating a community of people to help her carry on because I'm sure it's very, very difficult. Regardless of if her son was a little fucking Kia boy or whatever the fuck, a little step or whatever, she's created something that these people probably benefit from too so salute to this woman man i don't want to let that go by this woman this this woman is a um she's a dynamite woman man she's um i'm sure this is very difficult man i mean i'm sure it's very difficult man. to keep fighting for that next young man that may not be able to graduate uh may not be able to go to the prom those are some things that my son would never be able to do from here hill says they plan to have monthly meetings for the mothers to give them a space to talk and learn different coping methods while also getting out in the community to take a stand against gun violence when you have a group that have actually experienced that it's different these young men got to understand that these are mothers just like your mother lives that y'all have taken with senseless gun violence 
And Hill says the group is open to any mother who's lost a loved one due to violence. They also plan on having a march and rally next month for anyone who wants to be a part of the group. We'll put a, inf a link to that information on our website, fox10tv.com. Well, murder rates are under 50, so uh, oh, really? not bad for a Sun City. Oh, yeah, man. They're doing, they're doing great over there, man. County Sheriff deputies arresting three men for trespassing and burglary. Here they are on your screen. All this happened. <laughs> Yo, this is a first, man. There's no, there's no Suns or Umbritos, just three gliders. Wow. Keep y'all on the screen for a minute, man. This is this is an Ock Nation first, man. It's out of a Sun City. You notice it says armed burglary. That means they went in when nobody was there and stole stuff <laughs> while being armed. Well, of course, you guys are the most boring criminals in the world, man. Yeah, th that's one thing about movies. Those movies make you glad to seem badass. But in real life, y'all really like we're the badasses, man. <laughs> Here they are on your screen. All this happened last night on Tomlinson Road. Deputies were searching a property when they heard something from inside that house. They went inside and they say they found two men, Elijah Pirtle and Michael Hammett, with a gun and a duffel bag full of items from that house. A third man and the alleged getaway driver, Justin DeBose, was arrested following a traffic stop. All three were arrested for armed burglary and some other